Hello everybody, it's the Vertical Sandwich. Welcome back to uh, to book reviews. I need to move this just a tad. There we go. Right. That looks good. Um, yeah, so uh, today we're doing Foundation and Earth, the chronological last book in the Foundation series. Although there are two prequels we didn't discuss, we just discussed the original series from the 50s and how cool that was, and then we discussed the, we're discussing the two books that came afterwards in the 80s. And uh, this one was published, I believe, in 1986. So, uh, yeah. Um, now, uh, spoiler alert for any of the other four books. Um, so, the way it's worked so far is that the original trilogy is the set of kind of the foundation um, dealing with the mule and then eventually dealing with the idea of a second foundation. It turns out that uh, the second foundation is a practicer of these kind of psychic arts. Um, well, here we go. So, Golan Treviz, a uh, former councilman of the First Foundation, has chosen the future, and it is Gaia. A superorganism, Gaia is a holistic planet with a common consciousness so intensely united that every dewdrop, every pebble, every being can speak for all and feel for all. It is a realm in which privacy is not only undesirable, it is in incomprehensible. But is it the right choice for the destiny of mankind? While Treviz feels it is, that is not enough. He must know. Treviz believes the answer lies at the site of humanity's roots, fabled Earth, if it still exists. For no one is sure where the planet of Gaia's first settlers is to be found in immense wilderness of the galaxy, in the immense. Uh, nor can anyone explain why no record of Earth has been preserved, no mention of it made anywhere in Gaia's vast world memory. It is an, an enigma that Treviz is determined to resolve, and a quest he is determined to undertake at any cost. So, in the fourth book, uh, this golden Treviz was put in uh, spacecraft and suspended um, in time by these people of Gaia, and he was asked to choose. It was given to him to choose because this thing has to be voluntary, whether or not he wanted uh, the fate of the universe or the fate of the galaxy to be lie with the first foundation, or with the second foundation, or with Gaia, this super organism that wants to turn ever like the entire galaxy into this collective consciousness super organism. Um, there's a name for it, like there's a timeline and a name for it, like Galactica or something like that. I don't, I don't even know. Um, but so he goes to look for Old Earth, and so as he goes to look for Old Earth, if you've read the Robot series. What you'll realize is that what he's doing is examining the ruins of what came after that series. And there's some sort of kind of little, like, it's not even, I would say it's like a little wink to fans, but it's not. It's like a huge, like, hey, you liked my other series, so, like, let's just make them one series. And, uh, I hate that. I hated it. I absolutely hated it. We're gonna, we'll read a little bit from the book because I'm required to by the format that I set up, you know, 75 videos ago or whatever. So this this book is uh, the longest in the series. It's almost 500 pages, and if you but if you look, the the print is pretty pretty sizable and stuff. So. Golan said, "Pellerat, does it bother you if I watch?" "Not at all, Yanov," said Treviz. "If I ask questions, go ahead." Pellerat said, "What are you doing?" Treviz took his eyes off the view screen. "I've got to measure the distance of each star that seems to be near the forbidden world on the screen." so that I can determine how near they really are. Their gravitational fields must be known, and for that, I need mass and distance. Without that knowledge, one can't be sure of a clean jump. How do you do that? Well, each star, I see, has its coordinates in the computer's memory banks, and these can be converted into coordinates on the cor Comporellian system. That can, in turn, be slightly corrected for the actual position of the far star in space relative to Comporellian's sun, and that gives me the distance of each. These red dwarfs all look quite near the forbidden world on the screen, but some might be much closer, and some much farther. We need their three-dimensional positions, you see. Pellerad nodded and said, And you already have the coordinates of the forbidden world? Yes, but that's not enough. I need the distance of the other stars to within a percent or so. Their gravitational intensity in the neighborhood of the forbidden world is so small that a slight error makes no perceptible difference. The sun about which the forbidden world revolves, or might revolve, possesses an enormously intense gravitational field in the neighborhood of the forbidden world, and I must know its distance within, with perhaps a thousand times the accuracy of that of the other stars. The coordinates alone won't do. Then what do you do? I measure the apparent separation of the forbidden world, or rather its star, from three nearby stars which are so dim it takes considerable magnification to make them out at all. 
Presumably these three are very far away. We then keep one of those three stars centered on the screen and jump a tenth of a parsec in the, a direction at right angles to the line of vision to the Forbidden World. We can do that safely enough, even without known distances to comparatively far off stars. So at this point, like, like in this little passage, Asimov is really in his wheelhouse. He's really talking about the details and the math of kind of space travel and setting up this galaxy. It's super. Um, and that stuff's all fine and well. Um, it, it is. It is. It's, it's fine. What I, like, the thing about it is what I didn't like about, um, and here's the thing, I read the Foundation series before I read the Robot series. Because I've read a, a, a decent amount of Asimov. Asimov is a great read if what you want to do is just be handed a story that's going to be good and well put together and pretty easy to read and just pass the time. If you want to enjoy a light, like a, a, a not too heavy, like no research kind of science fiction, then you know Asimov is a good go-to for that. I'm not saying Asimov didn't write great things. Like I would say that The Gods Themselves is a masterwork. Right, it's just a brilliant piece of literature. But um, he also wrote things like Murder at the Abba, which is really fun, like a murder at the American Booksellers Association. It's just a hoot. It's just such a great comedy mystery. And like, you know, is that the same? No, they're not the same. They're not. And the majority of Asimov's fare is pretty lighthearted. Like Asimov did not. Asimov didn't think about science fiction the way uh, that kind of uh, Arthur C. Clarke did um, in, you know, that it's all about the tech. Uh, or um, he didn't really think about science fiction in the same way that uh, the guy whose name I can never remember um, did. The, uh, I know that Heinlein. He didn't uh, think about it the way Heinlein did, where it was always a vehicle for kind of a message. Uh, Asimov really thought that, uh, you know, uh, clever and fun is enough sometimes and it is it is like as long as you know what you're getting into if you're not if you're picking up the you know a, a, if you're picking up um you know a whiff of death and you're going like oh this is going to be the next Ulysses it's not it's not well you if you pick it up and go like you know I really like feel like action movie level kind of you know sci-fi it's perfect it's perfect it's a, the whiff of death is also a mystery because Asimov did that and won some awards actually for his mystery work his mysteries are fun they're like great kind of they're not they're almost like a different author wrote them they're but they're not so confined in the genre you can if you like Asimov's science fiction you will like his mysteries okay but um so <laughs> what was I saying something about the way Asimov writes things so Asimov's really, you know, he has a lot of fun with this and stuff like that. But so I read this be, um, before I read the Robot series, and the problem with that is that the ending makes no sense because it's such a huge tie-in to like everything that they're going through as they're um, trying to find old Earth. The Robot series takes place when Earth is still inhabited, but people have spread out, and the people who've spread out to other planets consider themselves. Like, they're separatists, right? Like, they, they have a resentful relationship with old Earth. And so, the spacer worlds in the robot series are talked about in, like, what came after what we know from the robot series. Now, uh, is the robot series worth a read? Yeah, it kind of is. I mean, if you like Asimov, the robot series is worth a read. Um, did I want this entire novel to be nonsensical because I hadn't read the robot series? I did not. And I didn't. I don't think that's a fair point for the author, like a, a fair place for the author to go, because his the series is were very are very distinct, right? It's there. There aren't huge. He wasn't writing like foundation books, and um, I'm trying to think of who did that. Who has the two the two series that tie in together? And I just finished. Is it like the Ansel? It's not the Ansel series. Somebody did that. Somebody did where they like they, they, they wrote concurrently. Somebody that we've talked about too, um, where they wrote concurrent series, and so you kind of have to be jumping back and forth, and that's fine if that's the way you start. And you're like, hey, book one of series A is you know is tied into book two of, or book one of series B, and then book two of series A requires you to read that. Okay, like that's kind of that's that's fine. That's a thing a writer could do author could do um but uh or obviously you know several authors have done things like 
unrelated prequels in the same universe. So this becomes like an uh, so he like Asimov endeavors in this book to make the Foundation series a sequel to the Robots series, like a far distant future in the same like and in a way far distant future because a galactic empire has been founded and has collapsed in the Foundation series. Now, um, so, uh, that's the thing, is that, like, that's what I really didn't like about the second, the, the, the fourth and fifth book in the series. And again, the fourth book won the Hugo Award winner, or was a Hugo Award winner. And that mosquito is gonna just, he's just gonna do what he's doing all day. It's a she. If it's trying to suck my blood, it's a she. They need to do that to lay their eggs. Fun fact for you. Um, and now, uh... Here's the thing, is that, um, uh, I don't, I'm putting this, like, making, it, I, I know it's unfair to think that Asimov could have set aside 30 years of writing to, to come back to a series and pretend he hadn't written things like the Robot series. That, that would be unfair expectation of Isaac Asimov. However, that's what little, like, kind of winks and nods are for. Like, it's fine to mention spacer worlds and stuff like that. But it's not fine to inject entire plot lines so that you have to... So then when I read the Robot series, I was like, oh, well, that's why Foundation ended the way it did. That's dumb. Like, that's what I ended up with. And maybe I, you know, it, when he wrote this, that was his body of work, right? So he's like, oh, people who are reading a new book from Isaac Asimov are, you know, are familiar with the robot series. It's my best-known series. Well, yeah, but that's still dumb. Like, it's still dumb to just go to, like, oh, my second best-known series, I should probably tie it in with my best-known one. Why? Why? Like, this, this series could have been, like, when the first three that are written episodically because they were published in magazines had a great flow and a cool kind of, like, M. Night Shyamalanian kind of how is this going to work out like oh I didn't see that coming thing going on over and over and over and they're great that way and then you get to these two and they're these like kind of heavy novels that are examining work that this author's already done and you kind of go and eh, this isn't what I signed up for so I hated this book and the last one um, I didn't like them uh, you can read them if you want I, but I really think that the original trilogy for the series is super strong, and that the two books that follow are not. But, um, so th that is Foundation and Earth. That is the last novel in the Foundation series that we're going to do. And when we come back, we have four Hugo Award winners left, and one is a series. So uh, I'll see you for something about that.